your eyes. Hey, Al, where is Wendy? I haven't seen him since last night. Anybody here seen him? No! Look out! Put it up over the lights. Little previous, ain't you, Jim? Won't be long, brother. Won't be long. What is it, eh? Hey, got anything to say, bud? Sure, I'm guilty, Judge. I've been away so long from towns and people, I just didn't know what I was doing. I was with Sherman down in Georgia. How long has this fella been in jail? Since this morning, Your Honor. What time this morning? Oh, three o'clock, I reckon. Three o'clock, then. Hmm. Half past two. Mm -hmm. I sentenced you to 11 and a half hours in jail. Sentenced to set back to 3 o'clock this morning. Now, how I tail it out of here? Thank you, Judge. Yeah. Well, what's next? Dan Thomas and Todd Ramsey. You boys get up there. Hmm. You're charged with trespassing on private property of Farmer O.V. Martin and of stealing a hog, which was recovered at the pint of a musket. Don't you Johnny Rebs know it's against the law to go stealing of? It wasn't against the law for Sherman down in Georgia. <laughs> what he means, Judge. I know what he means. I plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. What's that? Not guilty. That constable, you said the farmer caught him red-handed. He sure did, Your Honor. Oh, we took the pig, Judge, but but we're not thieves. We we were hungry, and we hadn't eaten for several days, and we got kind of tired of having people close doors in our faces just because we have the wrong kind of uniform on. Well, have you got anything to say before sentence is pronounced? We only came up to work on the railroad, and we found that finished. We're on our way to Texas. Texas. <laughs> It's a mighty good place for the likes of you, too. You and Lee and Beauregard and the rest of that rebel riffraff can get together down there, and maybe you can start another secession movement. Why, you dirty yanks. Hey, wait a minute, Danny, wait a minute. Hold on, oh, you can't do it off this court. What's the matter with you? Order! Order the court. Why, you young whippersnappers. I find you both guilty. And I'm going to fine you $50 apiece. And as for you, I'm going to make an example out of you. I'm going to hold you for contempt of court and fine you another $50. You know we haven't got $50, let alone him having 100 Take him away. Come Next on. case. That's delayed. Take your hands off him. Here's the fine for both of them. <laughs> well, that's a little bit irregular, Mr. Miller. Everything's irregular in this two-before court, including your remark about Lee and Beauregard. What? And there's $20 for the fine of Bats Delaney. Come on, Bats. Why, well, he ain't entered his plea. He pleads guilty. Well, that's a 20. And the fine's only 10. Take the change and get some of the stink out of this place. Come on, Ray. Court's dismissed. Hey, Oh, Mr. Miller. Was it? What do you want? Well, we'd just like to thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. And don't give it a thought. What outfit you boys with in the war? Jeb Sturt's Cavalry, Army of Northern Virginia. I might have known it. Nobody but a Virginian or a Texican would jump a judge in his own court. I say we'd like to work that money off of you, Lettuce. Ain't often a stranger will do you a favor like that. I ain't no stranger where a Johnny Reb is concerned. I'm a Texican myself. You boys still hungry? Oh, I got the same appetite I brought to town with me three days ago. That's take them down to Camp 18 and feed them. And keep your nose out of that jug. You boys look me up at the fight tonight. Come on, Red. I got to get rid of them high-collared dudes from Chicago. Say, who is that one-man cyclone? You mean you ain't never heard of Wendy Miller? No, we never did, but from now on, we're for him. Yeah, yeah. Where's that food he was talking about? Yeah. Oh, come on. Oh, don't you remember sweet Betsy from Pike? Who crossed o'er the mountain with her lover eye? With 
two yoke of box and a big yellow dog. A tall Shanghai rooster and one spotted hawk. Saying goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while. We'll come back again when we fan out our pile. They soon reach the desert where Betsy give out. While down in the sand she lay rolling about. <laughs> Gentlemen, we beg your indulgence for a few more minutes. We can't start this fight till Windy Miller gets here. He's being detained at the hotel on business. What business? The railroad's finished, ain't it? Start that fight. Get Windy here in a hurry. Sit your fighters in the ring. All right. Quiet. Quiet now. Quiet. The fighters will be right in the ring. This is all right. I think I'm gonna like this town. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty going on here, huh? <laughs> Introducing the pride of Camp 19. The best track layer west of the Mississippi, Dutch Henry. Quiet. Introducing the pride of Camp 18, Matt Sawyer. It's busted. Somebody get a doctor. Get a doctor, somebody. A fine time you picked to be a high jumper. Get him out of here. We got a fight. Hey, there's Wendy now. Come on. Now don't you worry, folks. Don't you worry for a minute. We'll have a fight if I have to take him on myself. <laughs> Come here. Hey, big fella. I'll take you on. <laughs> Excuse me. May I get through, please? Go on no. back and sit down. I'd like to get through to the ring if you don't mind. Go on back and sit down. Hey, wait a minute. Just a minute. Oh, you want to make something of it. <laughs> How would you like to pick up $200 in a hurry? Mister, I'd even spend some time to pick up that much money. Start getting out of your clothes. You're gonna fight Dutch Henry. Oh, no. Wait a minute. I'm no fighter. We're gonna lose $200 in cash. I'll do it for 50. What? We owe you the rest. Say, you got a good memory. I'll bet it on you. Thanks. What's your name? Dan Thomas. You'll tell him Texas Thomas. Get ready. All right, get him ready. You're crazy to do this. Henry's a professional fighter. He'll beat your ears down. We got the $50 to take us to Texas, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Here, hold on to it. All right. I told you folks we were going to have a fight. Introducing the champion of the Lone Star State. Texas Thomas. Do you think this is another one of Wendy's tricks? Work him around to this corner. We'll take care of him. This is going to be a decision fight, gents. According to the London prize fight rules, there'll be no biting in the clinches. When a man goes down, that ends the round. If he can't come to the center of the ring and toe the mark inside of 30 seconds, he loses. 
You ready, Texas? Yeah. Ready, Henry? Yep. Yeah. Let her rip. Come on, Come on. Dan's foot. You do that again, I'll take you apart myself. Now get back there. Let's get this fight going. <laughs> I bet you all thought it was real, didn't you, folks? Just a little entertainment I put on between the rounds. <laughs> oh. What did you let him see you for? Round two coming up. Time! <laughs> Where's Tex? Where'd he go? Anybody see him? Wendy? Oh, here he is. Come on, get up here and fight. Mm. Oh, yeah. I'm all right, Todd. Don't worry. Good boy, Tex. Go get him. Is he going to keep getting up? <laughs> Round 10. Time. is it? 35. Round 35. Time. I'm getting mighty tired of this. I don't blame you. Are you all right, champ? Don't they start the fight? Time! Danny, hey, Danny, you all right? Oh.
Hex, you want to quit? What happens to your bets if I quit? Why, I win, of course. You what? Well, you didn't really think I'd bet on you, did you? Round 40. Time? No. But I'm gonna make you wish you had. Yeah. Hey, you feel all right? Yeah. That 50 bucks makes everything all right. Yeah. Danny. Yeah. We uh, haven't got that 50 bucks. What? Well, I, I bet it on Dutch Henry. You what? You, you what? Whoa. You sure don't have to be told what state this is. Too big. You realize we've been riding a week without seeing a single human being? Kind of quiet and peaceful, though, after coming through that Indian country. Right now, I wouldn't even mind seeing an Indian. You'd think people would hang out a sign. Well, if we keep on going, we're bound to hit something. Like you could have picked a shady spot. Shut up. Now, which one of you fellas is the cattle buyer from New Orleans? Go through them. Out! I wish you wouldn't take those. Went all the way to Kansas to get him for Mrs. McLean. She needs them bad. Are you a dentist? You don't think them things would fit a horse, do you? Well, there's a point. Come on, come on. That's real nice of you, brother. It must be you. Give me that $10,000 and quick. How'd you know I was the cattle buyer? Never mind that. Get back in that coach. Good at it, ain't they? Yeah. Let's be moseying. Doing something like that. Was that so? 
Well, I was holding up stagecoaches before you got your diapers off. If I hadn't stopped you, you'd still be arguing with that tooth yanker. But a horse could wear false teeth. Well, I remember one time when I was way back in... I know. You knew a horse in Tennessee that wore a pair. Yes, I did. What the boss want to meet us here for? Well, you know as much about that as I do. <sighs> Don't know what them Texans fought so hard to get this state for. Hardest ground in the world. Uh, where is it any different? Huh. In Cheatham County, Tennessee, the ground is so soft they use it to stuff mattresses with. What's the matter with you? All right, on your feet. Get moving, keep those hands up. Who are you? Just a couple of strangers passing through. All right, now lie down. Can we make some kind of an arrangement? Not today. Get down there. You ought to split with us. That would be the honest thing to do. Go out. This ground's hard. All right, stampede their horses. We'll meet again someday. I hope you're carrying as much money. I don't think there's a town in the whole state of Texas. Here we are with all this money and nothing to spend it on. You know, the way you talk about that money, you'd think it was really yours. Now listen, Todd, what's the sense of... Well, we can eat anyway. Get a fire going. I'll cut one of them out. And hang on to this. Right. Oh, you're the sheriff, huh? That's right. Oh. Here's the hold-up money. Well, sure, it's the hold-up money. Can you admit it? Where's the rest of your gang? Well, we... Hey, wait a minute. I didn't hold up no stage. I suppose you're going to tell me you waylaid the fellows who did. That's just what I did. Where's a tree? Hey, look, I was going to bring the money back. I never saw the beat. Every time I want to hang a fellow, there ain't no trees. There's a big oak about a mile back, Sheriff. Hey, you can't do that without a trial. The Sheriff and Justice of the Peace, I hereby find you guilty and sentence you to be hanged. Get on your hey, horse. Hey, hey Come now, on. just wait a minute Come on, here. Get on your wait. horse. This is done, right, Sheriff. They say as how this tree was planted 40 years ago by Davy Crockett. Well, why don't you wait and ask the stage driver? Son of a court of law, and evidence is what counts. You had the money, didn't you? Indians! Indians! Where? Right behind me, hundreds of them. Here, boy. You're on your honor now. Take for the hills, man. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Ain't I the darndest liar? Come on. <laughs> Going. We've been hornswoggled. Get after him.
separate. Separate? Yeah, it's our only chance. I'll catch up with you someday. Texas ain't that big. Well, you ain't much to look at, but I'm sure gonna miss you. I ain't forgetting you either. Good luck, fella. Take care of yourself, Danny. All right, folks, sit down. What do you think you're doing? Sorry, lady, but I've got to take one of your horses. You'll do no such thing. I'm telling you to get off. I will not. Now, listen. You get off or I'll take both horses and the buckboard, too. Now, get off. Can you help me down? Some men after me. Get out! But if they catch me, they'll kill me for something I didn't do. Well, I could kill you for what you've done. Now get out! <laughs> I've never seen a person do so many things wrong in such a short time. What I do is none of your business. Now, just leave me alone. Perfectly comfortable. You're uh, sitting in a lot of ants. I like ants. No. Oh. Out! Out! Come here. Oh, well... Oh, I can't unhook you if you don't stop wiggling. Well, hurry up. Let me go. You can have your rig back now. I'll walk the rest of the way. I hope you break a leg. Um, thanks for the lift. Don't mention it. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, you sure are pretty. Get up!
I'm sorry. I thought you were slim. Where'd you come from? I was right over there. <laughs> no, no, I mean, do you work around here? Uh -huh. Since when? This afternoon. Oh, fine. Say, you know, you got some dirt right on your face up, right? Oh, listen, if you'd been bounced around on your ear in the back of this thing as much as I have, the least you'd have is a dirty face. Well, how come you did that? Well, it's a long story. Look, unhitch these horses, give them a good rub down. Yes, ma'am. You uh, belong here? Yes, I'm my king. Oh, that's a funny name for a girl. How'd you happen to get a nickname like that? Well, it's not a nickname. It's um, Michael. Oh, <laughs> kind of a mean trick to play on your parents, mm -hmm. isn't it? I mean, they, they expect a boy and get his name all picked out, and then you come along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it was. <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot. When you're finished, will you take an extra horse and go six miles out the Del Rio Pike and pick up Hank? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Who's Hank, your sister? <laughs> no, he's the foreman. May I help you down, ma'am? Thanks. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll see you later. Yes. Oh! Oh! Oh. <clears throat> oh. Listen, you. That food's only free with your drink. Hey, do you understand English? No sabe. You broke? Yeah. Why don't you say so? We got a right hospitable little town here. Never turn away anybody that's hungry or thirsty. If you're going to eat free, you might as well drink free. Come on over and have a drink on the house. Well, thanks. Don't give it a thought, brother. Don't give it a thought. smart, wasn't you? Well, who's smart now? Now, listen, Sheriff. No, you don't. Come on out from behind that bar. Come on, get out from behind there. You're Come making on. an awful mistake, Sheriff. I ain't making any mistake. Get his gun, Walt. Huh? Uh, keep him covered. Ouch! Oh! I told you you made a mistake. No, 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 no son, you better, be, you better be careful now. This, this won't do you. Come on, turn around. Now get back, all of you. Get back. Move! If you like your sheriff, don't start anything. No, boys, boys, don't, don't, don't start nothing. What's going on here? All the way, mister. Don't argue with him, Doc. That's my back he's got that gun into. Get out. He don't look dangerous. What'd he do? Held up the southbound stage. Move out of that door. Wait a minute. You got the wrong man, Sheriff, if you got him. We caught his partner with the money on him. You did? Yeah, and there were no Christmas trees out there either. That's funny. I was on that stage and he wasn't one of them. How could you tell? It was all masked. Well, a mask only hides your face. It doesn't change your voice or the way your bones is hung together. Oh. Uh -huh. And I swear he wasn't one of them. What about it? Oh, the doc's word's good enough for me. But it's sure kind of queer. Yeah, it's this heat. You can't believe what you see. Well, 
Can I have the gun? Stubborn, cuz. Thanks, mister. That was kind of a tough spot. Uh, no sense in a man getting hung for something he didn't do. And all his talking's made me kind of thirsty. Hmm. Give me a bourbon. What do you have? A cold glass of beer. I guess it did look kind of bad to the sheriff finding your partner with that money after the stage was held up. Yeah, I guess it did. How'd you get it? Well, me and my partner held up the bandits. Then when I was out running down some beef, the sheriff held up my partner. So I held up the sheriff. Sounds like he's playing some kind of a game. It does, doesn't it? Hey, Doc, can I come up and see you this afternoon? Yeah, anytime, anytime. Thanks. Was you going to return that money? That was my partner's idea. But you was going south with it, huh? Sure I was. Well, the sheriff took it away from us. Hey, George, I like an honest man. What's your name? Dan Thomas. What's yours? Thorpe. Buford Thorpe. Call me Doc. You live around here? Nope. Got any relatives around here? Nope. Where are you headed? No place. What kind of work do you do? Oh, I ain't particular. Anything that's a living. Hey, wait a minute. Open your mouth. Come on, open the wider. Yes, sir, it never fails. I can always tell the way a man's eyes look. Tell what? When he has a bad bicuspid. And that's as bad a bicuspid as I ever see in 30 years of dentistry. Bet you never even felt a twinge of pain from that motor yet, have you? No. You see, that's how bad it is. It's kind of a tooth that falls apart all at once. Yeah, come on up to the office and I'll fix it for you. Put that on the book, Walt. All right, Doc. You sure you know how? Son, I'm the best dentist in this town. And there's only two ways to be the best dentist in a town. One of them is to do the finest work. What's the other? Be the only dentist. Yes, sir, I guess it's kind of hard for an ex-soldier to make a living. Everybody treats them well when the war is on, but when the war is over, they're sort of out of place. Get pushed around from pillar to post. Now that's bad for a young feller. It makes him sort of bitter, makes him disgusted with conditions. Yeah. Sure does. Gonna be a lot of activity in cattle around here now that the railroad up in Abilene's finished. How'd you know the railroad was finished? Ain't it? Seems to me I read somewhere where they was gonna finish it this month. Ain't they done with it yet? I don't know. I was just asking. Oh. That drill hurt? What's that? I said I've had things done that felt better. Oh. Yeah, dang drill's kind of dull. I guess I'll have to get some new ones. Yeah. Yes, sir, there's a chance for a man to make a lot of money down here. He can just get his beef up there. Is that so hard? It seems to be. Yeah. I just bite your teeth together and kind of Grind them. Spit the pieces out. Print your mouth out.
Well, it looks like I might be able to get a job. Yeah, you might at that. If you hit the right place. Come in. Hello, man. You want me to come back later, Doc? No, we're all through. Come on in. Son, uh, shake hands with Matt Lashing. He's got as many cows as the next man, I guess. I'd know him. It's Dan Thomas. Him and his partners, the ones that held up them stagecoach bandits and recovered all that money. Say, that was a mighty fine piece of work. Yeah, this boy is full of fire and vinegar, man. Only thing is, he's had a little trouble finding a job, and he's sort of disgusted. Why, Doc, seems like there ought to be something around here he could do. Well, you're going to be needing more men, ain't you? Now that all them cattle's going up to Abilene, why don't you put him on? Hey, might at that. If you don't mind waiting till the doc gets through gnawing on me, we'll talk it over. Well, thanks. Yeah, uh, just wait in there and I'll get in the chair here, man. Oh, uh, doc, I meant to tell you, I'll have to work this out. I don't have any money. Oh, well, it's only a dollar. Uh, pay me out of your first month's wages. Now, how's them store teeth treating you? Well, doc, is a little on the right. See, will you learn a new tune? I've been listening to that same thing year after year, and I'm tired of it. Steer about the same thing year after year, and you don't get tired of it, do you? Well, I don't have to bunk in the same room with a steer. You couldn't anyway. Steer wouldn't let you. Evening. Matt Lasham said I was to bunk here. I'm a new hand. Come on in. He'd have brought me down himself, only he said you'd take good care. Yeah. We'll take very good care of you. <laughs> Ain't it a small world, though? Stand still. Keep those hands right where they are. Now, where's that $10,000? Can we talk this over? Not tonight. Go get his gun, Tennessee. No! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! I'm here! I got him! I got him! I got him inside! Why didn't you say who you were? What do you think I was trying to do? We thought you were somebody else. You mean me? Nice little reception you had fixed up for me. But I didn't think it'd turn out quite like this. All right, drop those guns. All right, move back in that corner. Come on, get moving. Now, wait a minute, Thomas. Don't be in a rush. The boys that work for me got pretty good jobs. I'd kind of like to have you stay and join the family. Wouldn't we, boys? But that's the fellow that held us up. Yeah, I know. That's why I hired him. Well, there's an empty bunk right over there next to mine. I'm Tennessee. Dan Thomas. Openly speaking, we're what you might call cattle separators. What? Don't you savvy? We separate the cattle from the owners. We ain't so awful busy, though, unless someone tries to take a herd up north. North? Yeah, then we raise them to keep them from getting the cattle to market. What happens to the cattle you wrestle? Well, we change the brand on them, keep them hid. When the price gets high enough, we're going to take them up to Abilene ourselves. According to that, Lash, you ought to make a lot of money. We all are. Hey, this ain't the kind of a country a man comes to for his health. No. I ain't so much interested in my health, either. All right, round them up, boys!
asked you to meet here in secret like this. We've got to take some steps to protect ourselves. I'm fed up on the whole thing. It ain't worth it. The trouble with us is we're not organized like the rustlers are. No, sir. Look at Townsend. We slaughtered his cattle and burned him out. I don't want that to happen to me. It won't. From now on, we're going to fight fire with fire. That's why I asked you to come here. Well, right here in Texas, we've got the greatest gunslingers there are. John Wesley Harden, Clay Allison, King Fisher, Jim Cortwright, Manning Clemens. And I want to hire them to work for us. Just is right. That's what we need. Blair, come on! I'm going out to California. I'm going to give Texas back to the outlaws. You can't lick this thing by running away. And you can't lick something you can't see. It's four months since Dusty was killed. Ain't nobody been caught yet. All the sheriff ever does is go out and look around and come back and say, well, the rustlers must have come down from the Indian nations. Well, we'll just have to keep on trying. Ain't as easy as that, Matthews. If I could get a fair price for mine, I'd sell out too. Good evening, Mike. Evening, Todd. Hello, Evening, Doc. Doc. This ain't a very good place for it, is it? Mm -hmm. For what? Sparking. Spark. In my day, a young fella didn't stand along the main street doing his sparking. Doc. When's the marriage coming off? Hmm? Is it marriage? Yeah, you heard of it, ain't you? He hasn't asked me See? yet. Four months and he ain't popped the question yet. <clears throat> Evening, Bert. Well, I think we better go in now, don't we? You may know how to run a ranch, young man, but you sure can run her. Well, might as well go in. Yes, I guess we better. Good evening, folks. Hello, Sam. How are you? Oh, hello, oh, Mike. Hello, Mike. Hey. Howdy, Doc. Hello. Hey, Doc. How about a little tune on the way? I ain't heard that organ since the day you brought it in here. You heard it tonight. Play it, Jeff? I don't have to. I got a first class accompanist. Hey, Mike. Yeah? They want a little music. How about waking them up? Sure. Todd here can do the pumping. You ought to be useful for something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said this meeting was free. It is. Well, it kind of looks like I'm paying. Todd. Hmm? See that man over there with the leather jacket? Yeah, what about him? He's the one who held me up. Yeah? Man, I'd like to talk. Todd, you old buddy, Daddy, you son of a gun! What are you doing what here? What are you doing here? How'd you get away? They just couldn't run fast enough. I thought they'd had you strung hey, up. What is this? You two act like long lost brothers. Well, we are sorta. Of. Well, if it isn't the cactus kid. Hello. Stay away from me. Yeah. Say, what's this about you trying to kidnap her? Is that what she told you? Yeah. I wasn't trying to kidnap her. You were too. I was just in a hurry to get a ride that day. You ought to remember. Oh, that, di Mike. This is Danny. He's the fellow I told you about. Hmm. Uh, Mike, huh? Mike, uh, I'm sorry for the way I messed you up, but uh, you were awful stubborn. I was stubborn? Well, all I wanted was one horse off your... You were lucky I didn't take a shot at you, that's all. That makes us even. Friends? Hey, Mike, Todd. Uh, come on over here and let's get this music started before these folks fall asleep. All right, Doc. Well, come on, you can help me pump. Oh, sure enough. Okay. Now we're going to start with Buffalo Gals. And I want you to hoop it up when I get to you. Uh, hey, uh, give me a G or something on the organ there. Uh, as I was walking down the street, down the street, down the street, up a little girl I chanced to meet, and she was fair to you. Oh, <laughs> She was fair to you. Oh, and 
change, 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 change. Coming out tonight. Coming out tonight. Coming out tonight. Ancient? Your eyes are like the star so bright, star so bright, star so bright. I hope they don't come out at night. You are so fair to view. Oh, I thought you were going to help me pump. I can't pump and look at her at the same time. Yes, sir, and that's the girl for me. Come to the wedding. Now, look here, Danny. Mike is not here. We do here. We do here. She bellered like an alien steer. She was fair to... And yeah, she was, she. <laughs> What's the matter here? I don't know the handle came out, dog. The dang thing's always coming out. Put it, down. Put it right in. Over. There, now get going. All right. That's just fine. Right on going. Yeah. I'm a hen-pecked man, but I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Her father's got millions, and she's the heir, and she was fair to you. see you all again, but we'll get sociable a little bit later. I'll get right down to business. I guess you all know why I came down here from Abilene. I worked hard promoting a railroad to haul cattle, and I ain't getting no cattle. These cattle ain't quail. They can't fly up there. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. But you don't realize how badly the East needs beef since the war has been over. Maybe you can tell us how to get them through, the rustlers and Indians and raids. Yeah, if you think it's so easy to get them there, why don't you take them yourself? Yeah. Brother, that's exactly why I'm here. Yes, sir, I'm going to buy the beef from you right here and take it through myself. But remember this. Remember this. It's going to be just as tough on me getting this beef to Abilene as it was on you. Since I'm the one who has to take all the risk, I feel that it's only fair that we establish a price that will give me at least an even break. <laughs> Since I'm the one who's going to have to worry about the stampedes and things, I figure that a fair price for your beef would be uh, $2 a head. $2? That wouldn't even pay for the hide. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, friends. I knew this was too good to be true. You'd think from the way you were acting, I was trying to rustle your cattle. Mm. Well, there ain't a man in here who can say that I ever took advantage of a living soul. You are being a little unreasonable. I think two dollars a head for your beef is a fair price. What'll you sell them for? Yeah, yeah what'll you get for? I don't even know I'm going to get them through. I might have to turn back the same as you did. Wendy's right. We can't get them through, and there ain't no sense of fooling ourselves anymore. Of course, $2 a head ain't very much. Well, you can have mine for $2. I've got 4,000 head. You can have a $2. Mine, too. I have 5,000. You can have the flying W. What's the matter with you, player? Listen, friends. Listen, friends. Maybe Wendy's trying to help us. And then again, maybe he's trying to help himself. Now, you know as well as I do that if the East hasn't had beef for four years, the market price is way up. That means the average steer should bring $15, $18 a head, maybe more. Yeah. Now, I ask you people, just, just who do you think Wendy's more interested in? Us or himself? Please, just Shut a up. minute. Shut up. Go ahead, Todd. Say your piece. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Todd. I, all I'm saying is that the $2 a head that Wendy's offering, that, that may be a lot of money to his way of thinking. But $18 a head is a whole lot more, and that's what we can get in Abilene. You've tried it and failed. Yes, sure we failed, because this is the same as the gold rush. Everybody trying to get there first. 
But you've proven what Dusty King tried to tell him for months. That the only way we'll ever make it is to get together a big herd. The biggest this state ever saw, and some of them are bound to get through. Now I ask you men here with big herds, isn't $18 a head worth taking some risks for? Come on outside and settle it like a man. What? They're going to be talking about cattle for hours. Let's get out of here. I happen to be interested in what they're talking about. That's because you've never listened to me. Now, come on. Todd can take care of that. as you are in the sunlight. Why, you blankety blank, hamstrung hunk of jerky beef, I... Now, don't get upset. Nobody's perfect. I'll marry you anyway. You... Listen, I wouldn't marry you if you were the last, last man, man in, in the, the world. world. Good night, Mike. Come in. Sit in the chair there, Wendy. Kind of bothered you, didn't it? It's the first time in my life I ever upset the apple cart with one of my own speeches. Well, ain't no use denying it. We sure got a mess on our hands. You may remember I didn't want to come to Texas in the first place. It was your idea. It's not the first idea something's happened to. Say, you got a bad bicuspid there. Yeah, wait a minute. You fixed that the last time I was here. I did? You sure did. <laughs> well, it looks like there ain't but one thing left to do. That's get Todd Ramsey. Now, I can go out there I with like a couple you, of... like you, Matt. You're a simple man of direct action. Oh, thanks, Doc. It so happens that's the worst thing we could do right now. Let me take a look at that, Wendy. After that meeting tonight, Todd Ramsey will be the rallying point for every rancher in this section. You sure I put that in? Yes. Well, you ought to know. He gets hurt, I'm afraid people begin to wonder why. That's 100% right. But remember this, Doc. If one man gets through to Abilene with his cattle, we might as well throw all our ideas out the window. This young squirt ain't going to get through. We just got to begin all over again at the beginning. Hmm. Came out. I knew that wasn't one of mine for them dang Kansas City jobs. And you go back to Abilene, Wendy. Matt, you take a thousand head and join the drive. Why, that's crazy, Doc. Me join a drive? Yeah, it'll be crazier if you don't. The color of this whole thing's changed in the last few hours. Every rancher around here is going with him. And the quickest way to attract attention to yourself is not to go. But you're going to raid them, ain't you? You can bet your life we are. And this time they'll know it, too. I'll hit him so hard that in the future, not a man in this state will move a steer out of his own backyard. What do you know? Had two bad ones. That's the trouble using that cheap stuff. Need a little gold in there. Your left hand back to your partner.
partner, right and left hand. Rope that cow, ran that cat. Meet your honey with a bunch of the hat. Treat them all alike, treat them all the same. Treat them all alike, no cheating in the game. Meet your partner with an elbow whirl. Promenade around the world. Promenade, you know where. I don't care. Put that pretty girl in his chair. Hey! Well, I'm still up here. I want to make a little speech. Tomorrow is a big day in the history of Texas. Todd Ramsey is going up the trail with 6,000 head of cattle. 7,000, Doc. You forgot mine. Thanks, Masham. There's 7,000 head of cattle. I want to say, here's hoping he gets through to Abilene without losing a single steer. Sanctimonious old buzzard, ain't you? It pays, don't it? How's things? Fine, Doc. Boys all set? Yeah, they're riding advanced guard. Guard? Just to see that nothing happens. Oh, that's good. Doc, I want to talk to you about my teeth. Well, uh, what's the matter with them? They're, they're noisy, that's what they are. Listen. Uh, well, uh, they're bound to clatter a little at first until they get set. That ain't what you told me. Uh, well, you just keep right on chewing with them, they'll be fine. Well, you'll get them back if they don't stop clicking. <laughs> Why so quiet? I'm just, just thinking. What about? Why are you going to New Orleans? See about a new cattle market? How long are you going to be gone? A couple of weeks. You going to miss me? You know I will. I'll miss you too. But then we'll be together a long time after we're married. What's the matter? You are in love with me, aren't you? Is that what this is? Love? Well, what else? I don't know, Dan. It's, it's all happened so fast. That's the way it's supposed to happen. Fast. about it? When do we hit him? I want to talk about that. We've already let him come further than Lasham said. Yeah, he said to hit him after they crossed the Red River. And they did that three days ago. I know what he said. You told me enough. Why don't we move in there and break up that drive? You act like you've got a private reason for not wanting to. I have. Money. Money? Did you fellas ever stop to figure out what you're getting out of this? $45 a month? Yeah, but we've got a promise of a lot more. You can't spend promises. Look, we're wrestling. Somebody's making big money out of the cattle we wrestle. Yet we take all the risks. Ain't we entitled to some of the profits? Maybe we are, but Lashman would never stand for that. I don't think he'll have anything to say about that. Wait a minute. Lashman's a friend of mine, and I'm not gonna stand by and see anybody do him dirt. Hold that, Comstock. 
Let Danny finish what he was going to say. Now, none of us ever expects to have more than $50 a piece in our lives. But if I tell you how we can have two, three, maybe $4,000 each, who would you listen to, me or Lasham? Well, I'd listen to you. So would I. Me too. I thought Lasham was a friend of yours. Well, he's $50 worth of friend, not $2,000. All right, then we're all agreed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We don't bother those cattle at all. We let them go right on into Abilene. What are we going to do? I'm working on that. Matter lose something? No. It's only about 10 or 12 miles from here. I ought to be back before dark. Think it'll work? Can't help it. This is the only road running south. They gotta pass this way. See you later. Kind of slick, ain't it? Who's a cattle buyer around here? Well, I am. I'm with that herd coming up from Texas. Thought you might like to know we're better down about 10 miles out. Be here in the morning. Listen, brother, don't tell anybody else about it. I want them all. First come, first serve. Then I'll come out and buy them right there. How many heads you got? 7,000. I'll be there in an hour. Bring the money with you. through. How do you know? The cowboy just rolled in. He says they're bedding down 10 miles out. Park Hill and the others are going out to buy the cattle right there. We got to hurry. You find Red and get the horses. I'll go pick up some money. Right. Are they coming? Yeah. They took it hook, line, and sinker. They ought to be here in about a half an hour. Got any more coffee there? Hey, what's this? Must be them. They sure didn't lose any time. Looks like they're anxious to do business. Yeah, well, so are we. Better get mounted. Say, what is this? Hello, Wendy. What are you doing here? Where's them cattle? Oh, about five or six miles farther on. Why? You aiming to buy them? Yes, and if I don't get there first, I'll have to pay three prices for the lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Wendy, we're going to give you an even break. Yeah? One price for the whole herd. Hand over that money. What? Listen, I ain't going to argue. Hand it over or I'll blow you off that horse and pick it up myself. You sure you're not making a mistake? Come on, where is it? It's in my saddlebag. Pretty cute little trick. Yeah, ain't it? I just wanted to make sure. Think this up all by yourself? Yeah. Come on, get off your horse. What? Get off! How are we gonna get back to Abilene? Well, that 7,000 head of cattle you just bought will be along here first thing in the morning. And you just pick out the ones that fit your leg and hop aboard. 
dirty little polecat can't do this to me. Why didn't you do something? All right, Mr. Ramsey, there's your check. I'll take all the beef you can bring up. We'll be back. The trail's open now. There's no stopping us. No, sir. Sure. Good luck to you. Oh. Hey, Tottenham calls for the celebrating, huh? Yeah, it sure does. Hey, you boys go on down to Bull's Head. I'll see you there just as soon as I cash this. We'll be there. I've known for a week there was something wrong, but I couldn't do anything by myself. Yes, sir. Uh, this is wonderful. It was my idea to get the railroad out here to haul in the beef. I fought to bring in the first herd, and now the town is full of cattle and not a single head of them's mine. And just to make it perfect, I'm out $20,000 on the deal. Well, you got to blame Doc Thorpe for that. He hired Thomas. This country ain't so big, but what I won't catch up with him one of these days. What are we going to do now? You do what you like. I got to be the first to go down and congratulate the cowboys on getting through to Abilene. Look, Danny, you already bought what you wanted. Let's get out of here. What's the matter, scared? No, but this is Wendy Miller's town. We're crazy to be here. We're asking for trouble. Maybe you should have gone back with the others. Oh, I was just saying how crazy we are. Go down and see if the blacksmith's done with their horses. I'll meet you as soon as I pick up the saddle. Didn't walk smack dab into something. Finished? Almost. Say, you by any chance when them Texans had brought up the cattle? Yeah. I thought nobody but a Texan would buy a fancy thing like this. Yeah, hurry up, will you? Say, listen here, young fellow. Nobody ever done good work by hurrying yet. And I ain't going to spoil the looks of this saddle by doing a bad job of engraving. Looks all right to me. Yeah, and your eyesight's bad. Because I ain't finished the E. Out of my light, out of my light. <laughs> Wendy. No. He hasn't got that much nerve. Maybe not, but he's in the saddle store right now. I'll see you boys in a couple of minutes. Say, you must think an awful lot of this, Mike, to give him as costly a saddle as this. There you are. Take it away. Anything extra? Nope. Mike's thrown in. What's your hurry, Tex? I didn't expect to see you so soon. Now I want that money back. Sorry, Wendy. It's too late. I wouldn't if I were you. Drop it. And don't bother to come back to Texas, because I'm taking over. Come on, Danny, get off the street. Wendy Miller. When I tell my grandchildren about this, they won't believe it. Then what are you doing in Abilene? Where'd you get the money for that saddle? I told you my Uncle Rodney died. You're not fooling me. You're the one who held up those cattle buyers. Think what you like. I see the answer now to a lot of things the folks back home have been wondering about. Listen, you fell on one side of the fence and I fell on the other, and it's too late to argue about it now. I'm not going to argue with you, but and you don't know. give me a lecture on morals. You saved my life and I saved yours. That makes us even. And what I do from now on is none of your business. Yes, it is. Because I happen to be in love with Mike, too. I never said anything to her because I knew how she felt about you. And that was all right with me, up to now. So? You can't have her. I don't think you'll have much to say about that. Well, I'm saying it now. Danny. Danny, Danny, we gotta get out of here. Somebody just killed Wendy Miller and we'll get blamed for it. Sure as shooting. Got him smack dab through the heart. Sorry, it had to end this way, Danny. Remember what I told you. Look at all the decoration. Wonder what's going on. Must be fixing up to welcome us back. Oh, no. As long as you don't see a rope with a noose on one end, pain for us. Get up.
Hello there. Hi, Doc. What's all the flags out for? Todd Ramsey and the others got through to Abilene with the cattle, fixing to welcome them home. Well, that's fine. Now maybe Lashman will pay us that back salary. Yeah, this ought to cause a lot of debts to be paid off. Well, how was New Orleans? All right. Spare me a minute. I guess so. What's on your mind? Go on up to the office. Wait here for me, Tennessee. Sure. Understand you're taking over Matt Lasham's ranch. News travels fast, don't it? Don't it? Yeah, Matt and I made sort of a deal. Well, that's a bad deal for you. Yeah, why? It ain't his to begin with. Whose is it? It's mine. Yours? That's right. Then uh, you and Wendy were a combine. Yeah. I gotta hand it to you, Doc. Yes, sir, you're all right. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. So are you. You're a little ambitious, but I think we can work that out, can't we? Anything you say from now on goes, Doc. I gotta take my hat off to you. I ain't button in, old boy. You're faster than the telegraph. Ain't you forgot what I told you up in Abilene? Well, take it easy, Danny. If he's in, I'm out. Uh, we can settle this later. Put that hog leg away. And... If you and me's gonna be partners, you're gonna have to depend on me a little. Go on. I like you, Dan. I, I like the way you act. Even though you did let them cattle get through. What's done's done, and maybe it's for the best after all. It sort of establishes this Todd Ramsey as a man able to perform miracles. From now on, they'll sort of look up to him as a leader since he's inherited Dusty's place. They'll go when he goes, not before. And if he don't go at all, uh, they won't go at all. Don't that sound simple? Uh-huh. All we have to do is kill Todd Ramsey. Yeah, exactly. That'll scare him off. And even if two or three more do try to get through after that, they, they won't be hard to stop. I think you forgot something, ain't you, Doc? Hey, now, wait a minute, Danny. Uh, in a normal situation, uh, I can see where a young man would rebel at the idea of killing his best friend, but this ain't a normal situation. It's just like a bad bicuspid. You, I'm with you all the way, Doc. Except we don't touch Todd. Now, let's not you and me start this partnership with a difference of opinion. I'm better qualified to do the thinking than you are. You better start thinking, then. Because we're not gonna touch Todd. Petticoat? I ought to... Oh, Danny. Darling. That's a fine way to treat a present I bring you, kicking it around like that. any presents like this. It's only the beginning. Oh, I'm so happy I could almost explode. Everything happens at once. Todd sells our cattle and, and you come home. Did you miss me? More than you'll ever know. We'll take care of that. Let's get married. Right away, today. Without Todd. What's Todd got to do with it? Well, he's your best friend. Well, we'll, we'll surprise him. No, no, I couldn't. Why not? Well, silly, a, a girl can't just square off and get married like that. You have to have clothes and, 
And besides, they're coming back from Abilene tomorrow. Lasham's here now, and he said the others are right behind him. Oh, you wouldn't want me to have all the excitement in my life at one time, would you? Well, it seems the wrong way to start out married life, but you're the boss. <laughs> some attention to me. Nice going, Todd. Oh, to think that you've really done it. If only Dad could have been here. That would have been nice. How is New Orleans? Fine. You should see the wonderful present he brought me. Wouldn't be a saddle now by any chance, would it? How did you know? Oh, I know Danny. You're not married yet, are you? No, we're waiting for you. That was thoughtful of you. Hey, Todd, come on. We're waiting for you. Come on, hurry up. The gang is here watching. All right, I'm coming. I guess I better get over there. Oh, say, do you mind if I tear your prospective bridegroom away for a drink to celebrate? No, oh, take him along. Why don't they have saloons that women can go into? I'll build you one. Oh, you Come on here. Fine job, fella. Thanks. What's it gonna be? Bourbon. Bourbon. Nice work, Todd. Well, thanks, Bob. Here you are, my boy. Best in the house. Say, when did you start drinking? Just now. Well, I'll shake hands with you, Todd. Thanks, Stubb. Thanks. Go in the back room. I want to talk to you. Right. Well, go on. Talk. This is private. Go on. Oh, I'll see you later, fella. I've been with you long enough to know you can't be made to do anything. But you've got to see this isn't fair to Mike. What ain't fair? Marrying her. Why don't you say you want her for yourself? That has nothing to do with it. Oh, sure. You're just thinking of her future. Well, I wouldn't call that very much of a future, being married to you, spending the rest of her life on the run. I ain't running anywhere. I can take care of myself. Sure, you can. But what about her? Let's drop it. You said it once yourself. You fell on one side of the fence, I fell on the other. That's the way it still is, and I got a feeling that's the way it'll always be. Well, is that any kind of a life to offer a girl, is it? Oh, you know it isn't. You're just too doggone stubborn to admit it. Oh, come on. Hey, what do you say? Let's get out of here, huh? I'll leave with you. That's how much I think of her. You would, too, wouldn't you? Let's get started. You don't have to leave with me. You shot Todd! Run, Danny! Run! Oh, 
Sheriff. Just a flesh wound. Get him to my office, boys. Pick him up. This is it, Doc. Now, wait a minute, Danny. Don't you think we'd better talk this thing over? 